I literally start, if you guys don't know, I present with eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. I've done this, literally people have kept my stuff since 1989. I've been presenting with pieces of paper since 1989 because I think it's personable. I think flip charts don't work. And I think when you guys do it by hand, probably 99% of the time when I do this, people go, oh good, I'm visual too. I get that every single time from me. I'm visual too, right? So it's not just the words you're going to say. Visually, you have to show them, and they like it, right? Okay, so I invented this. Ooh, Kleenex. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, when I do this, it's not going to be perfect. I want to, I want to stop and come back to you guys and tell you why I do some of this stuff. You know why? This is, to me, is kind of an instructional video for you, right? You can go make your own, but quite honestly, I've been presenting since 1989 and, and at my own company and then Keller Williams for 21 years. And I even showed Keller Williams like this in a different way, right? But this is the first time I've done this. There's the old-fashioned model. The old-fashioned model was set up like this. There's the international company. And they're usually run by investors or sometimes just people like Gary Keller, Dave Linegar, or investors. And they say, you know what, we're going to go all over the United States, so we're going to sell franchises, and guess what we have to do? We have to find, to find the country into regions. The regions usually are the people that sell the franchises. And even if you're at a big independent, Howard Hanna, other ones, they really are structured the same way. It doesn't matter if it's a franchise, because they're going to figure out who's going to sell our franchise. And the regions... get to find broker owners. Now these are the people that take all the risk. These are the ones that put their names on leases. I signed a seven year lease in Palo Alto for $48,000 a month, personally guaranteed. Never again, by the way, after seven years, when it got all paid off, that's when I told Susan that I had just signed a seven year, $48,000 a month lease, and it's done. The stress of a broker owner, this is the stress. This is the stress. You pay $250,000, $300,000 and try to make money. The broker owners, who do, they, who do they hire? Team leaders, managers, and those people hire their staff. The next step is, is who do they hire? Oh, you guys. Now, what's really funny in this whole model, I don't know about you, it looks tops down to me. And it looks kind of like a pyramid. Because the person down here who makes 100% of the commission, this is the person that makes all the money. Where's the money go? Up the chain. Who makes the, who's the owner? These guys. What do they get off the top? A franchise fee, a royalty fee, 6%. Who gets that? 6% goes to this person and this person. I used to own this. I used to own Northern California and Hawaii. Right? I was this. I was this. I was this. I've lived this world, literally. I was in with another franchise, Realty Executives, for five years. I've been in this world for 26 years. And everybody will say... It, I don't draw it like that. I draw it like that because I've only been in it for 28 years, right? Or 27 years. Okay. The reason, when I met Glenn Sanford, and the reason you guys go, how did you see it so quick? I usually get that number. I get that question all the time now. How did you see it? I said, I ran these. I was in them. Hard gig. Hard gig. Even big independence, hard gig. And when I met Glenn, I said, Glenn, he goes, Gene, here's what we're going to do. I said, what? New model. 
I said, man, I like that because I got news for you. I am not going to leave Keller Williams after 21 years and go to a parallel model. He goes, here's what we're going to do. And I said, what's that? And he says, we're going to have the agent as the owner. I said, dude, how's that happening? He goes, Gene, it's, I said, how does that even work? Do you know this is a true story? Glenn said to me, he says, Gene, have you ever read the Starbucks book, Pour Your Heart Into It? I said, yes, I did. 1997, Howard Schultz. Howard Schultz started Starbucks, and you know how many franchises they have? Zero. They own all the Starbucks. He says, we're going to do that, Gene. I said, Glenn, that is, now that intrigues me. He goes, we're not going to do regions. We're not going to do broker owners. We're not going to do team leaders. I said, man, now you've got my attention. He goes, we're, the, we're going to have the agents be the owners, and they're going to help us grow this. I said, oh, man, that's a cool. How are you going to do that? How are we going to own them all? He goes, it's real easy. We're going to set up a cloud office. You guys ever heard of Airbnb? You ever heard of Amazon? You ever heard of all those things that use what? The internet and the cloud? He goes, that's what we're going to do. The reason I attach myself to Glenn so much is he understands the internet like I don't understand it at all. <laughs> right? Does that make sense? I about all, all you guys, but I'm not a tech head, right? I didn't grow up in that model. I'm a salesperson. He says, we're going to use the cloud. I said, what's that do? He says, it get ri gets rid of the regions, gets rid of this. He says, that's savings. Savings. I said, I've always wanted to do this, but how are we going to do this? He goes, Gene, I got a corporation. I said, what? In 2013, I, I did a reverse merger on a company in, in Canada, and we have a corporation. I said, you have a corporation? He goes, yeah. We're going to give stock to all our agents through EXPI. And I said, dude, what, is it common shares or preferred shares? He says, it's common shares. I said, we all get common shares. There's no difference. He goes, no. I said, what's the stock price? He goes, 18 cents a share. Now, you've got to understand, though, even though it was so low, and I took five months to make my decision to move over, by the time I moved over, it was 30 cents a share. I thought I blew it. <laughs> That's a true story, because I went, Susan, it's already 30 cents a share. It was 18 cents a share when I met this guy. But here's the difference. I know agents. I'm an agent. I, I love agents. And agents, I said, Glenn, I'm serious. If you give stock to all the agents at our company, You've changed the model. You've got to understand, it's a different model. I look at it from the model point of view, and I said, that's cool. And he says, and guess what we're going to do? And I said, what? And he says, we're going to have this thing called rev share, revenue share. I said, what's that? He says, we're going to take the money off the top that's usually given to these owners, the 6%, and we're going to take 50% of our company dollar, and we're going to share it among the agents in what's called revenue share. And I go, whoa. I, he says, there's a seven-level system. I said, oh, I had a seven-level system. Yeah, this is kind of cool. Can you discuss with me? So I tell agents this. We sell real estate just like you do at Coal Banker or Century 21. Nothing is different. We're members of the MLS. In fact, half the people here probably are president of the boards. We're not trying to change the industry the way we sell or co-op. What we are changing is the broker model forever. How many people have copied Amazon? Anybody? Not, not a lot, right? In other words, nobody's gotten to that Amazon. We're Amazon. We're the first Amazon. And I tell agents, look it, since we don't do this, don't do this. And quite honestly, when you go back and tell your broker you're going to go to a cloud office, they're going to say, oh, that's not going to work. Old-fashioned model was invented in 1906. <laughs> Just so you know, it's old-fashioned. I tear this off, right? And I give it to them. Hey, where, where, where can we stick this? Can we stick this somewhere? We'll stick it right here. That's an eight and a half piece of paper. Now, Chotamate could decide. All my Japanese friends know what I'm saying. I really believe that we're the first agent owned company. This is the game changer. This is the game changer. Guys, let me ask you a question. When you take a buyer out, 
Do you tell them, let's go look at rentals? Or do you tell them, we're going to go look to buy a home because you want to create what for them? Equity. Equity. Just so you know, when I met Glenn, I said, if we can all have stock together, I'm going to create equity for almost every single agent. And just so you know, all the agents you guys recruit, tell them to push the button and do the 5%, right? So here's the five ways you can get stock. I do it really easy. The first way is what? First sale. You get $200 worth of shares. What's the second one? When you cap, what's the cap? 80-20, until the 20% hits what? 16,000, then you go to 100%, you get what? $400. The third way is what? When you sponsor an agent, right? You get $400. I tell them, look at go sponsor 10 agents this year and get $4,000 worth of stock. These three are what? Vested in three years. I said, the cool part is, you get to see it, you have the stock, you get to look at it, but you know what? You can't cash it for three years. I said, that's when Glenn became a genius to me. Because you know what? Retention's hard in, in real estate. The fourth way you get it is the most common, is you can take 5% of your commissions and purchase stock at what? 10% discount. discount. We're a corporation. By the way, how much at your company, how much at Howard Hanna do you get? Every month. Can you get stock in Howard Hanna? Weikert? Nope. Long and Foster? Nope. Name some independents. Don't always go to the franchises, right? But all the franchises, I said, you can't, you can't get stock. So I said, here's the thing. I know agents of ours. I just met one today I had for lunch. He said he cashed in a million dollars worth of stock after two years. Just had lunch with him today. So here's my thing. This is the game changer for everybody. The fifth way is the ICON program. How much is the cap? And I ask them, do you remember? And they go, yeah, I said it's $16,000. Once you pay in the $16,000, if you do another 20 transactions after you cap, you'll be on 100%, you're going to pay a $250 transaction fee, which adds up to $5,000. And I said, so it's really not sixteen. dollars it's 16 plus 5, and they go, yeah. I go, but guess what? When you hit the 20th, you now qualify to be an icon, and you can qualify to get all your $16,000 back in what? Stock. Stock. By the way, David, just so you know, you're an icon. If you don't join today, you'll be the first one in three years that didn't join. After I showed him this. I literally look at him and go, you're going to be the first one that does not join. I have never had an icon not join in three years. Okay? Wow. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> now, by the way, you guys can do this really quick, can't you? I'm kind of giving you the slow technique today because no, nobody's filmed me in a long time. Uh, I wanted to wait, and, wait until I was this good looking. So here's the thing. I had a good haircut this week. This is Angel. He's my haircut guy in Puerto Rico. He did a good job. Okay. The cloud. I just tell them that the cloud got rid of all the expenses at other companies because a lot of people think that we cannot. We cannot, for some reason, be sustainable. In uh, 2018, a beautiful man that we all fell in love with, uh, Dave Jenks, uh, and his new wife, Gina, and I had dinner in Austin, Texas. And, he, and Dave passed away just a little bit ago. And Dave says, Gene, and he used to run KW, used to run Century 21. The guy was just a mentor to all of us. And he says, Gene, they don't get it, do you? After we ate dinner and didn't talk real estate at all, he goes, they don't get it. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you guys got rid of all the expenses. I said, I know. Why can't people figure this out? See, if you're in the old model, and you're still running J.C. Penney's and Sears, you got to try to pretend like Amazon's not going to work for a while. <laughs> right? Don't you think, have you ever read articles about uh, Airbnb? They have how many more units than Hilton and Marriott? Like five or six times. But Hilton and Marriott say they're not dealing with the same customer. Excuse me? Airbnb's taking over, right? 
So in other words, everybody's going to tear us down because they have a legacy model, an old-fashioned model. Hey, let me tell you about RevShare. David, can you ask, pretend you're a, a recruit, I'm going to write these up, and can you tell me what they are? And I literally do this with people. I said, what are these numbers? Now, most agents are not numbers people, like 99% of you, right? So I just write those on a piece of paper. I said, what are they? And I said, let me tell you what they are. If you save $900,000 after taxes, after taxes, and it's in the bank, and you want to retire at 55 years old, guess what your advisor, your financial advisor, will tell you? By the way, go find one today, and they will tell you this. Guess what? You're 55 years old. You can only take out, if you make, you can only take out 4% a year. They literally will tell you that. So 4% of that is $36,000 a year, or $3,000 a month. And I tell them, you know, I don't know about you, but in Texas, $3,000 a month can pay your house payment and a car payment. In California, it pays for a surfboard. <laughs> right? So $3,000 a month to you Californians or Hawaiians might not be much, but I would say for 90% of Americans, $3,000 a month could help in this downturn, couldn't it? Okay? By the way, David, I know you work at Coal Banker. You have an option. You can go save $900,000 or... You can do something I'm going to show you right now. While you're selling real estate, just do what you normally do. David, this is you. Do you think in two years, as you're selling real estate, you sell, what, 30 homes a year? My gosh, you've got 60 people you're talking to. You're doing transactions. Do you think you couldn't in two years get three people, three persons a year, David? Say yes. yes. So that's six agents. They would be on your first level, and those six agents, if they capped, remember we talked about capping, let's just pretend they're cappers. They would pay in how much? $16,000. We're going to give you from that $16,000, guess what, up to $2,800 per person. 16 times that is $16,800. Now, David, I got news for you. That's doable. I'm not trying to oversell this. But those six people in two years, guess how many people they might bring? Let's just pretend one each. Is that doable, David? Oh, yeah. Yes. So on your second level, you'd have six people. Hey, you might not even know them. One of them might be somebody in Chicago. One of them might be anywhere in the world because, you know, bottom line is agents are now the owners. So agents are now attracting people. See, we've given that opportunity. So guess what? Guess how much, and David, let's pretend you're an agent. I literally ask them, how much do you think you're going to get on the second level? Now, say what they usually say. 2000. Most of them say 1400 I will tell you about 90% of them, you've got to ask the question. How much do you think you're going to get on the second level? They say, 1400 I said, that's very common. But this is when Glenn Sanford became a genius to me. He says, Gene, we're going to award 3000 up to 3200 for those. I said, why? He goes, I want it to be a team effort. I want this person, I want this person to help this person. Everybody helps the other. I said, man, that is great. Glenn, you're a genius. So that's $36,000 a year or $3,000 a month for how many agents? Just so you know, this is doable. Every single agent in America can do it. Now, I've just done two years. If they don't feel comfortable, do three years, do five years. The bottom line is, I haven't even told you, David, about the other levels. These agents could recruit people. You know, it could get bigger. All I want to do is share this with you. David, I got a question for you. You got an option. Stay at Coal Banker, save the 900,000. No, seriously, it's okay. Save the 900. Or come with us, and I'll help you do this. It's just an option in life. By the way, it's okay with me. I have no, no, no thing in reality. By the way, are you going to go home and show this to your wife? Why don't we come, why don't we meet next week, and I'll show this to her again, okay?
By the way, in recruiting agents, what's the most important thing? Spouse. I'm telling you right now, if you think you guys do great presentations and people don't come, you didn't include the spousal unit. I'm telling you, 100% of the time, they go back and they go, and the spousal unit goes, wait, the Christmas party's next week. I can't wait to see my friends. In other words, right, always include the spouse. It's really, really important. Now, I've got a second revenue share thing that I show. Now, I just showed you that is very simple. But let's say you want to save four and a half million. Four percent, $180,000 a year, 15,000 per month. I can guarantee you right now, look it up tonight, how many people in America have four and a half million dollars saved? There's, oh, no, not even one percent. I couldn't imagine one percent. It's, it's, it's going to be way under 1%, right? So if, the, if that's the percentage, in fact, I looked it up one time, I think, 7% uh, uh, of America have over a million dollars in equity in anything. 7%. So if I'm talking to 100 agents, I know that 93 of them, them don't even have 900,000 in the bank or 900,000 in equity. So I said, you know what? I'm going to show you this one. So 15,000 a month. I said, what, could that buy more than a surfboard for you, David? Okay, let me show you this one. I'm going to show you this one in this regard. I have a daughter named Nicole. And eight years ago when I joined EXP, she was working full time a, a, as a regional director for a tanning salon. And, I, and she had her license, but she'd never sold. I said, Nicole, could you have a three-year plan to recruit 10 agents? Ha! Huh. She looks at me, she said, Dad, I can do that. I said, three, three, and four. So you'd have 10 on your first level. It's still 2,800, which is what? 28,000. I said, but Nicole, here's your job. Your job is not to just recruit 10 people. I want you to help them get their 10. So 10 times 10 is what? Now in real life, Nicole, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you, 10 don't get 10. One of them gets 40, one of them gets 30, one of them gets 20, one of them gets 10, and six of them push the 5% button, they become icons, they enjoy our system, they're agent owners, they go train, they love our systems, but don't ask me why, but there isn't going to be everybody. You know what? You can get 100 on your second level, which would be what? 320,000 times 348,000. Now, I literally did this to my daughter in my living room before I joined EXP. And she goes, well, Dad, they're all not going to be cappers. You know? Well, you know, that's what some people will tell you. I said, no, of course not. Let's just pretend they're all half cappers. Let's just pretend it's like 180,000 or 15,000 a month. Do you guys remember the scene in Wolf on Wall Street when they were in the restaurant and DiCaprio was sitting down and the guy said, you know, I live in the same apartment building as you and I noticed you have that yellow Corvette. It was 1986. We live in the same place. How do you afford a yellow Corvette? And he goes, well, I'm a stockbroker. And he goes, well, how much money do you make? He goes, well, I made 70000 last month. And the guy goes, you showed me a check for $70,000. I quit my job. I come work for you. The next scene is, if you remember, Polly, I quit. He showed him a check for $72,000. That's what my daughter did to me. She literally quit a $100,000 a year job, single mom, right? Single mom, and said, I quit my job and I come work for you. Well, it's been eight years. She's had another kid. She's had a marriage. She's really not done it full time. Oh, she's only making about $30,000, $40,000 a month. I'm telling you, this is a life-changing event if you want to get into RevShare. And I look at them and I said, they said, I've never recruited anybody. I said, that's okay. Did it, either did my daughter, Nicole. She didn't know a thing about real estate. I taught her. Oh, by the way, there's a third level, fourth level, the fifth level, sixth level, seventh level. I'll tell you what, you got an option. You got an option. What's your option? Save. 
four and a half million after taxes. Hey, did you guys hear yesterday when, uh, I didn't want to correct him, but not correct him, he did the right thing. When the Franklins were up there, what did he say? The penny thing? Remember the penny thing compounding? Okay, I was on a plane ride a couple years ago. Not a couple years ago, actually this summer. And I took out my yellow pad, and guess what I did? I did the penny thing, but every day I did what? 28%, 28 tax bracket. So instead of 10.4 million at the end of 30 days, guess what it was? $67,000. Everything we've learned in our lives, if you want to try to save four and a half million, good luck. I'm being real with all of you in this room. It is going to be a long haul. It's just going to be a long haul. And when I did that, I went, wow. You know, I've been to go to all these seminars. They're pretending, well, who in the heck doubles 100% anyway every day? What's that all about, right? Okay. God, I'm doing good, aren't I? Okay. Here's another thing I do on every, every interview. I want to give you stuff you can use. In the last four years, Keller Williams has gone. I, I don't know why I use Keller Williams, mainly because I was there for 21 years, right? They've gone from 171,000 agents, I have their numbers, four years. At the end of 22, they had 174,000 agents. Okay? I know their numbers. Four years of growth. What have we done? Anybody know? Try 15,500 at the end of 18. We ended the year a little bit over 86,000. Let's say 86,500 just so it's an even number, right? We've netted... 71,000 agents. Because you know why? We're the first cloud brokerage. We're the first one that gave ownership to agents. We're the first ones that allowed agents to be in the game to go grow the company. That's why. We created a new model. You don't grow fast like this if you don't create what? A new model. You've got to under make them understand that they're at the old model, right? Nobody wants to be at the old fashioned model, right? By the way, I will give you some tips I've had for years. Never say traditional. Traditional is good. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. Christmas is my favorite. Old fashioned. Never use traditional. You notice they use it in all the periodicals NAR does? Well, that's a traditional model. Well, they just don't sell like I do. Because quite honestly, tra traditions are good. Old fashioned models are buggies and horses. Okay, here's what I do to every single person. I do this on Zooms all the time. If you guys have had me on Zooms, Kurt's had me on Zooms. Everybody's had me on Zoom. So I have a new person on. I said, you know, they have 174,000 agents after 40 years. Congratulations. Good, good company. Guess what percentage of those make 3,000 a month, more than 3,000 3, a month, or 36,000 a year? What percentage? I'll just take a couple guesses. Less than one. Less than one percent. Five percent. Ten percent. By the way, if you ask agents at KW, the most common thing you will get is ten percent. An agent will say ten percent. An owner will say one percent. Why? Because the owner looks at what? The numbers. So whatever they tell me, if they say ten percent, I go, okay, so ten percent of that is 17,400 people are making more than this. Does that make sense to you? And they go, yeah, that's a good, I said, that'd be good. I said, guess what the number is? 196. Toto. 196 people out of 174,000. In profit share. Thank you, Monica. She's on the board with me. She keeps me in line. <laughs> but what I'm telling you, this is when you look at them and you go, old-fashioned model. It can't affect agents' lives. By the way, at Keller Williams, there's only 196 people there. And then I go, at KW, let's go to the uh, stock. How many of the agents own stock? <laughs> now, you can do this with Howard Hanna. 
You can do this with Long and Foster. You can do it with Weikert. You can do it with any of them, Windermere. You can do it with anybody. You go, how much stock? You guys have to make correlations with the fact that they don't have it. Right? So... Well, those 196 people are almost regional owners, owners of offices. They've been there 30, 40 years. There you go. Here's another one you've not seen before. Here's, if you're brand new to attracting agents, I want to tell you one thing. It's doable. Everything I'm showing you is doable. Practice, practice. Practice, do it yourself, do it in your own handwriting. You'll be much prettier than me, and you know, you guys will be, you know. But, but here's something that I've done a long time that's kind of fun to do with somebody and go, do you know the history of real estate? So if you've never recruited anybody, see, I taught this to Nicole, and I said, do you know the history of real estate? And they go, no. And I said, it's real simple. Watch this. In the 70s, who dominated? Who, who came out with the first franchise? Century 21. If you go back to the, uh, all of the um, Dirty Harry movies, and the, if there's anybody in real estate in the old movies, they got a gold coat. No, they do. It's kind of fun. But Century 21 was the first franchise, did extremely well in the 70s. Who, who came out in the 80s and was going crazy? Remax. First 100% concept. Who, who dominated the 90s? I hear Coldwell Banker. It was Silverman. Silverman was the head of, it used to be Sendant. If you want to know the real thing, it was Sendant. And he had the idea to go what? Buy a lot of these huge independents. Fred Sands in LA, uh, Henry S. Miller in Dallas. He bought these huge firms and he turned them into Century 21s, Coldwell Bankers, ERAs, Better Homes and Gardens. And so, and, right? Okay, I got it. Don't worry about it. So anyway, just pretend my name's Robbins. Okay, anyway, he gave me two minutes. Um, so that was Sendant. What are they called now? Anywhere. Anywhere. In 10 years, they won't be anywhere. <laughs> Who made up that name? Was there booze involved? Okay. Who dominated the 2000s to 2010? KW. I was there. Who drew my name in 2010? Well, wait, here's, here's what I'm going to tell you. Here's what I say. What do you notice about all of these people that dominated? What are they? Franchises. Franchises. What's the other thing? What else do you know? No, what else? Nobody's dominated another decade. Nobody's, nobody's dominated a decade. See, somebody took the franchise model and just did another franchise model. Did another franchise model. So nobody has duplicated a decade. Who, who did 2010 to 2020? By far. By far. Who's going to dominate 20 to 30? EXP. Who's going to dominate 30 to 40? If there's not... We, let me tell you, 10 years from now, everybody will have, and Glenn said it before, we will have tons of cloud brokerages. If they're not cloud brokeraged, they're just going to be J.C. Penney's and Sears. Okay? One more really quick. I'll end with this. I call it's over. It's over. It's over, Clark. You know why it's over? Watch this. I came from the KW world, and you could do this with any franchise, but I use KW because I know most of their numbers, right? They have 174,000 agents, right? Do you guys know how many offices they have? They have 813 offices. That's the latest report. How do their offices grow? Anybody know? Who do they hire? Oh, yeah, Jackie O. So they hire team leaders. So they must have 813 recruiters. 
Well, let's face it, some of them don't have team leaders, right? But there's going to be 800. How do those team leaders get paid, Jackie? Salary. Salary. It's over. Here's EXP. We have 86,000 agents, right? Do we have any offices? But 10%, actually 12% of you get rev share. The number is actually 12%, but I'm just going to use 10% because I can't do math that well. So 10% of that is 8,600 people are out there trying to recruit people. That's phenomenal. How are they paid? Commissions. And I asked the person in front of me, let me ask you a question, David. In your life, when have you worked harder? When you were getting paid salary or commissions? It's over. We have more people. They don't have events like this. They don't have people fired up because for the first time in the real estate history, we are allowed to become owners. We are allowed to go bring our buddies. We are allowed to go have fun in real estate, right? And I'm just telling you, it's over. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.